Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to talk about two things. First off, we're going to talk about Game Textures, an excellent resource for 3D modelers out there. If you need texture maps for your games, it's hard to get better than Game Textures. Second off, we're going to talk about their new integration with Blender, which is just awesome. And they've got integration into just about everything, but they just added Blender to the mix. So let's jump into the first thing, and then we'll get on to the second thing. Now, the first thing, of course, is Game Textures itself. This is a website. There's nothing really magical about that. This is a resource for getting textures for your game. There is a huge catalog of textures. I believe there's over 3,000 right now. As you can see, here are some examples across a broad number of categories, as you can see right here. So we have 489 sci-fi textures. We have 1,154 urban textures. And we can explore into, so urban textures you get here you see, they're very, very high quality, high fidelity textures, and they're set up and created obviously for games, as you can tell by the name Game Textures. So, what do you get here? Well, first off, if you are completely free and you don't want to sign up, don't want to register, don't want to do anything else, they still got you covered. Come on up here to freebies, and you can get several textures completely free. So these are some of the examples that they've made available uh, for free users, and we're going to come back to that in a second. Now, the flip side is, if you are willing to sign up for a plan, yes, including a free plan, credit card required, just do be aware of that, uh, for $0 a month, you can download, you get three credits. So basically, you can download three textures per month from their um, collection. Uh, you have to have an earnings of or a revenue cap of $250,000, okay? And that's actually applied across the board on all of their things. And basically it boils down to there's a three credits per month, 30 credits per month, and 500 credits a year plan, depends on what level you're at. So if you find yourself using more than three a month, you're gonna to wanna to jump up to this $25 a month plan. And then you can also buy more credits as you need more collections or more uh, textures from their collection. Now let's head on back over to one of their samples or their freebies, and I'm going to show you where this collection really shines. So here we are, and you know you got a couple of brick textures. I'm going to go ahead and download this guy right here. So we're going to click it, and you're going to notice it brings you to this kind of page. And you see up here the Substance logo. That is because this is Substance compatible. Come on down here. You select which engine you want it to work with. So normally there's there's pre-configured already to work with Unity and Unreal, a generic PBR workflow, and Substance Designer slash Painter slash uh, all of those Substance material kind of uh, product line up there. But the one that's new is this Blender option. So I'm come in here, grab Blender, and then select, well, Cycles. It's really your only option. And then you can select two or a 4K bitmap. And I went ahead and did this already. So now I'm going to go um, to the next step. Which, by the way, if you head on over to their own blog, they have a bit of details on exactly what we are covering here. Um, but this function, and there's a link here on how to get started, but I'm going to basically show you that right now. But what you'll also need is Node.io. Now, as I always do, I will toss all of these links down below. Uh, just go ahead and download and install this Node.io plugin, or just download it somewhere, and I'll show you how to import it. Come on into Blender. Then you're just going to go at, um, install add-on from file and then navigate to the file you downloaded. And then once you're done, you're going to want to come back in here, search for Node.io, and then enable import export Node.io. Now, what this allows us to do is bring in entire structures of textures all in one go. And now let's go look at the process of doing so. So here I am. This is my uh, standard cube scene. I'm just going to go ahead, start off. We'll unwrap this guy. Uh, cube projection seems to make sense for a cube. And head on back over here. So now what I'm going to do is show you how to texture this guy for use in Cycles using a Game Textures material. And this is pretty sweet. So first off, let's switch over to Cycles. That's what we do. And then what we do is go over to the material, 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 click Use Nodes, like so. So we just created our texture, and I'm going to bring up a new window. So let's bring that guy. We'll close the tools down on that guy, and then we'll switch this guy over to the Node Editor which is right here. So now we've got this default material for this guy. Nothing magic going on there, but uh, let's just do a control A to select everything, add, and then we'll group and we'll make a group. So we've grouped all of that stuff together. And now what you'll notice is if you've installed Node.io correctly, you've got this new option at the bottom here for your properties. So again, the end window. Uh, at the bottom of it, there is Node.io panel. And now what you want to do is go ahead and navigate to that file you downloaded. So here I am in downloads, and it was called Very Stone Block Masonry Mossy Blender Cycles. And in that folder, there is a B Nodes file. And that is the file that Node.io is there to create. That you can, it allows you, Node.io allows you to save and uh, load B Nodes files. 
So we'll go ahead and select this B nodes file like so, and then click import node tree. And you'll notice it just created this second hierarchy of nodes like so. And now what we can do, we can actually get rid of this guy if we so wish. So let's just get rid of that. And then you come in here, you will notice this guy can be expanded upon. And there is the tree of nodes that this creates for you. So you don't have to set up all of these different things. So you see, for example, um, Game Textures has set up a normal map for us. Uh, what all have they done? A normal map, a metallic map, a roughness map, and then the base diffuse map are all pre-configured for you. So you don't have to create your own material here. They've already got the material node graph created for you. So now in theory, this guy is ready for use. Now let's go ahead and switch this guy over here to um, material. There is our object in the world. Pretty impressive stuff. So let's go ahead and bring in a background. So I'm going to go over here, preview, use nodes, switch this guy out to an environment map. Uh, open up, uh, where's my download? So this guy, okay, surface is background. I want surface to actually be, yeah, background, environment. Okay, that should have done it for me. I'll switch over here into rendered mode. And there you see our end result. So now let me just track in my camera. So I'll go back here to uh, material again. And lock camera to view, switch to the camera view. Let's just zoom that in and take a look at how our texture looks. There we go, so nice zoomed in view. Let's switch this over to rendered view. And while it is doing that, let's do a proper render on this guy. So let's switch this out to, uh, did you, where did you go, Joe DiMaggio? Uh, render, I always forget where I put this. So I want to do, so I am in cycles. I want to put render to quality, not dimensions, output. Da, 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 da. One second. All right, so go down here to samples. We'll go ahead to final and let's do a render of this guy. Now I'm not going to get, this is going to take a couple of seconds. So I'm just going to pause it and I'll bring you back when it's done. And done. So here you can see the final render result of our project, our texture in action and it is crisp, clean, awesome. So it's one of those things to be aware of. There is a resource out there called GameTextures.com. Uh, they've got over 3,000 plus textures in there. You can sign up for free uh, to get up to three a month. And um, they've got a bunch of freebies. So if you just want to play around with them for your game engine, game engine of choice, that is well, exactly what we did. Everything we did today did not require any signing up or anything like that. Now, this is, again, really cool that they went through to every single one of their textures in the library and pre-configured a Blender um, Cycles node structure for it. So you just don't have to go through that time-consuming process. So if you want to use these things in Blender, in the Blender PBR workflow, the work is done for you. And as you can see, there's also setups here for Unity and Unreal Engine, some pretty cool stuff. So if you are looking for textures for your game, definitely check out GameTextures.com. And if you're a Blender developer wanting to work in cycles, even if you're just trying to figure out exactly how you should be structuring your own render nodes, uh, this is a great resource. You can just bring it down, um, you know, use that Nodes.io plugin and see how they configure their actual uh, network to make it look as good as they do. Just keep in mind, you can expand out any one of these nodes like so. So if you want more detail on how the normal or the height map was configured, you can just expand it out like so and find out. So pretty cool stuff. It's definitely nice to see Blender getting more and more love these days. And it's really cool to see these kind of resources out there are just kind of making game developers' lives much better. And one of those things where you kind of, you can recognize when you grab a model off of an asset store, but textures are a lot more reusable because they're, they're mimicking real life. So unless you're using a recognizable sign or something, you know, a grass texture is a grass texture. It's not going to stand out and make it look like your game is using the same grass texture as 900 other games. So using uh, textures from a library is almost never a negative. It, it's a time saver. It's often a money saver uh, when they're pre-configured and they're often seamless and set up to be used in a game environment. 
using a, a library resource like this is almost always a no-brainer. So let me know what you think. Do you use game textures already, or are you using another resource like this or a free resource out on the web, or do you create your own uh, textures? Uh, let me know. Comments down below. Also, are you a Blender Cycles user? If so, will you be using this in your workflow in the future? All right, that's it. Hopefully some of you guys found that useful. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.